The Browns. The Browns. So we're heading to week three. We're heading to Cleveland. Um, personally, Sam, I don't know what to think of this game because, to be honest with you, the Browns have 15 players on the injury report. They are decimated. Hmm. Um, but last week, I think what concerns me most about Cleveland, and you can tell me if you agree, is their defense highlighted by Miles Garrett, former Giant Dalvin Tomlinson, um, Shelby Harris, Jeremiah Owusu Karamoa. They sacked Trevor Lawrence four times last week on a promotional day where Everbank Field was named Trevor Bank Field. Trevor <laughs> Lawrence looked atrocious. Well, not it was not just him. He had no time to throw the football. Uh, Browns get their first win of the season. They got blown out by the Cowboys in week one. Last time these teams played, 2020, Baker was still quarterback. They won that game 20-6. to six. And Sam, the Giants have not beaten the Browns in Cleveland in a long time. In a, in a long time. The Browns, do you remember the season where the – the season after 42 where the giants are like 10 and one 11 and one that first loss was the browns they're the browns yeah well it's it's interesting because i the browns don't seem that scary of a team when i'm seeing them just you know playing anybody else but thinking about them playing us all of a sudden i'm like oh okay i don't think their offense is that strong. Um, and I do believe that this will be, hopefully for us as well, a defensive battle. Because, I mean, Miles Garrett alone is just a freaking animal. Like, he, and now that they have Tomlinson and JOK, they just, they're, they're, they're monsters. So that's what I'm mostly concerned about. Um, but overall, I do feel like this, I, I don't know, maybe it's just the touchdowns from last week that I got me excited. But I'm like, this is a doable game, right? Like, I feel like this game is a winnable game for us. It's not like we're completely tossing it. Browns have not looked good at all. Sean Watson looks like he's not getting paid an ungodly amount of money. It's it's crazy how this Browns team has kind of fallen apart despite them putting so much time and effort and money into it. But that's just me. Yeah, they should have never moved on from Baker Mayfield, but they did. And now they're stuck with a fully guaranteed quarterback who is not living up to the hype of his contract. Um, for me, Sam... The Browns are a team that relies on two things, their running game and their defense. And with their running game comes strong offensive line play. And we know the Browns over the years have had a phenomenal offensive line where you could throw almost anybody back in there running back, whether it's Nick Chubb, who's still recovering from last season's injury, Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt, who's now back on the Kansas City Chiefs, um, Pierre Strong, those Guys all run well, and it's because of the line they have up front, like center okay. Ethan Pochich, guards Wyatt Teller and Joel Batonio, in my opinion, the best guard combination in the NFL. And then mm -hmm. the two tackles in Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin, who are both hurt, Conklin trending towards playing, Wills I'm not sure, but even their swing tackle, Dewan Jones, would start on most NFL teams. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those things where Cleveland's identity on offense is running the football, and then their identity on defense is stopping the run and pressuring the quarterback. It's a winning formula. Stefanski's an old-school coach, and the Browns have overachieved the last few years since he's been there. He doesn't need a good quarterback to win football games, mm -hmm. and that was demonstrated last year. It was, and they won a play, or they made the playoffs with Joe Flacco. <laughs> it was that was cinematic. For real. I loved I I kind of loved watching Joe Flacco play football again. Yeah. Should have kept him. Should have, should have kept him. Um, yeah. So Sam, let's talk about keys to the game here. We'll start mm -hmm. with the Giants. Okay. Name one or two things 
what needs to be done to beat this Cleveland team, old school team, run the football, smash mouth style. How do they beat them? Obviously, very different opponent from Washington in week two. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that especially going off of everything that you were just saying about how the Browns do win football games. I mean, we just spoke earlier in the show about how impressed we were with this offensive line. Continue to be that good offensive line and make sure that Daniel Jones does not get beaten to a pulp every single play. Like that that is a huge thing because you have Miles Garrett coming at you at 15 miles an hour. It's not something that we want to see going, especially with Daniel Jones, especially if even with a loss, Daniel Jones is feeling a little bit more confident in himself with the touchdowns that he got on the board last week and zero interceptions. Let's keep that confidence up. Let's continue to be a good offensive line. And let's see an improvement in this defense. Let's shift. Let's figure out the best way to stop the run because at the end of the day, that is how they're going to put points on the board unless Deshaun Watson starts flinging it in the air to Amari Cooper or something, you know, like, I, and I just don't see that happening. So on the ground, get the, st- get that done. And just the offensive line just needs to keep doing what they have been doing. I think here's a fun stat you'll want to hear. Amari Cooper has been targeted 17 times throughout the first two games. Oh boy. 17 times. Yeah. He has five catches for 27 yards. Oh, I didn't know it was that bad. Mm-hmm. I knew that I knew that it really was not, you know, they weren't really clicking as much as that as Amari has with some of these past quarterbacks. Because Amari Cooper is a very good wide receiver and is very um reliable. And Deshaun Watson just does not seem to be able to get the ball in his hands for whatever reason. It's not I don't think it's Amari's fault at all. I think that it's all to Sean Watson. Um, yeah, if this play continues, I mean, there's got to be a chance you see Jameis Winston in this game. Uh, At this point, I think everyone would rather watch Jameis Winston. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, and I'm not the biggest Winston guy, but, I mean, I Winston. he, yeah, he hasn't really gotten a starting opportunity since 2021, the year after Drew Brees Retired. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't think Winston's a, a bad quarterback. He's a very good backup, in my opinion. But for me, my keys to the game um, get the ball to Malik Neighbors, please. Um, just constantly target him. He loves the targets. He's very hard on himself. He's going to look to get some payback after last week. And Denzel Ward, who on paper is a very, very good. Uh, press man corner Sam he has not looked good over the past two seasons his numbers have been a little bit deflated and I think Malik neighbors could really exploit him in this department um I'm also thinking a, a potentially big game from Darius Slayton because he's going up against Greg Newsom Greg Newsom is a guy who's been battling injury since entering the NFL he's on a contract year and every time I mean I knew Daniel Jones was going to play well last week and get his receivers the ball. Every time we're almost ready to move on from Daniel Jones and either he gets benched or he gets moved on from, he reels you back in Mm -hmm. like like a fish. And (laughs) it's so difficult to want to move on from him. And trust me, I still do want to move on from Daniel Jones. But I think he's going to play well again. I do. I think he's going to play a good game. And he looked more confident last week against Washington. And, you know, part of it was him. Part of it was Carmen Brasillo. He's, you know, Jones has only gotten sacked six times. And I think getting the ball to Malik Neighbors is important. And the new scheme in front of him, the offensive line, allows him time to get Malik Neighbors the football. And if you're a one read quarterback, which sometimes I hate to admit it, Jones is, Malik Neighbors is that first read. Mm-hmm. And if you throw it near him, he's going to get it mm-hmm. nine times out of 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then for me, it's, you know, pressuring Deshaun Watson. Um, Giants defense had five sacks last week, and none of them came from Burns or Thibodeau. 
right now. Here's the Browns injury report as of today. So Dewan Jones, swing tackle, did not practice with a knee. Jedrick Wills, limited with a knee. Jack Conklin, full, also with a knee. So Conklin will likely play. Wills is questionable. Dewan Jones, I don't know. It's already Wednesday and he hasn't practiced yet, so he has to get at least one or two limited sessions in there, potentially starting with tomorrow. Um, that's not looking too good. So Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns on paper will have a much difficult matchup. These are better tackles than what Washington presented, but they're banged up at the same time. So you want to get pressure on Watson and make him confused. Um, Dexter Lawrence against Ethan Pochich should be a phenomenal matchup on the interior. Um, and yeah, I just overall, I think you want to getting pressure will help you win that turnover battle, Sam, that ever so important turnover battle and when you're looking at things you get pressure i think you win this football game because the browns have not forced the turnover yet this season Mm -hmm. so all in all i think if the giants do that they have a real chance to win as we will move on to our next segment players to watch and sam i'll start with you here um i guess you can call this what is it the dalvin tomlinson revenge game yeah sure is he on your list here potentially yeah i would say i I feel like i'm incorporating a lot of what we talked about earlier with my keys to the game and my players to watch dalvin tomlinson um and miles garrett are two guys that i am a hundred percent keeping my eye on because like this is not an easy feat you know like this is this is tough it is not an easy the easy guys to go up against. Um, so those guys are a hundred percent um in my line of sight watching this game. Um, I'm also going to toss in um Amari Cooper, like we were talking about earlier. I know that um we just mentioned that he's only has five catches on 17 attempts, but knowing the Giants defense. Mari Cooper could have this game pop off. So just something to keep our eyes on. I'm not saying that he's going to, you know, have a gajillion touchdowns or anything like that. But just knowing that stat and knowing our defense, just just want to keep close eye on Amari Cooper. Yeah, um, I also think with um, Kevin Stefanski reporting today that tight end David Njoku's status is heavily in doubt mm-hmm. for Sunday's game. He's not going to play. Um, it, it's, yeah, a lot more pressure on Cooper, and he's getting a lot more attention, which is opening up lanes for Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore. And Jerry Judy last week had 98 receiving yards. He was solid. Um Elijah Moore, high volume guy. I just, I think at tight end, it'll be Jordan Akins stepping in for um, Njoku. Njoku's always hurt. The Browns are always hurt. Um, Play aside, Watson's always hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they really have much consistency going for them there. Um, And for me, defensively for the Browns, Sam, it's, Jeremiah Owusu, Kar- Karamo is my guy. Um, you remember me hyping him up that one year on the draft show. Yeah. Uh, I love him. Sideline to sideline scraper. Really, really fun to watch. And, yeah, playing behind Miles Garrett, that that's tough. And I don't know about you, but that that Andrew Thomas-Miles Garrett matchup, must see TV. I would agree. Definitely going to be good. But hopefully – Andrew Thomas is gets a little bit more push on him there, but I it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, a lot of respect for Miles Garrett. He just continues to pour it on every single year, um, even during the bad seasons. He's been there since 2017. I believe he's the longest. No, he's not. I believe it's Batonio who's longest tenured mm-hmm. Brown, but I, yeah, Garrett, Garrett's definitely. up there. Garrett's up there. 2017. I can't believe he's been there for that long. Mm-hmm. And you're 100% right. Every year, no matter what the Browns are doing, Miles Garrett is popping off. I mean, didn't he just win Defensive Player of the Year like two years ago? Mm-hmm. Like, he's no 
freaking joke. I I met um Miles Garrett at the Super Bowl. His thighs, I'm not exaggerating. They're this big, each of them. So this guy is no freaking joke. I'm not one to base my judgment on a player off of stats, but let's just take a look at this quickly. 2023, mm -hmm. Sam, 14 sacks. 2022 and 2021, 16 sacks each of those two seasons. 2020, he had 12. He only played 14 games, though. Uh, That's 20, really impressive, though. 2019, he played only 10 games, still had 10 sacks. Um, 2018, 13 and a half sacks. His rookie year, he had seven. He's never had a season below seven sacks. I mean, rookie season getting seven sacks is yeah. in and of itself, like, fantastic. Do you play, you play 10 games, you get 10 sacks. You're averaging one sack per game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty damn good. And since 2021, he has not missed the start. Oh. So. I mean, he's phenomenal. And he's still only 28 years old. So he still has game really? left in him a lot. That's crazy. I thought he was 30. Mm -mm. He's young. Yeah. Um, he was the no I believe he was the number one overall pick in 2017, right? 2017 mm -hmm. NFL draft. Yes. That long ago. Yep. Miles Garrett was number. We were both still in college at that time, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. It's crazy. Yep. Mitch Trubisky was number two. Yeah, number Mitch two. Trubisky. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Mahomes is in that draft. Um, 10, 11, right? Yeah, yep. Um, quickly here for the Giants. We'll flip the script. Who's going to have a big game on Sunday? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take something from what you said earlier in the show, and I'm going to say Darius Slayton. We had some really big plays from from Malik Neighbors, and he's definitely a player to watch, hundred percent. But just to get a little bit more of a deep cut in there, like Darius Slayton, technically our veteran wide receiver, right? Like he mm -hmm. he's the guy who's been around for quite some time now. I think that he he deserves a bit more love, and if they're going to be all over Malik Neighbors after seeing what he was doing last week, and like you said, going up against Greg Newsom. Get the ball, Slayton. Why not? You know. And I'm going to say Devin Singletary too because I'd love to see him get another touchdown next year, next week. I love him too. He's so good. I mean, you never really have to worry about him not playing well because his yeah. floor his floor is very very high. Yeah. So again, he's not a burner. I mean, he's quick, but he's not Saquon. He's not going to run seventy yards down the field. Motor, as mm -hmm. they call him. No. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Malik Neighbors is one, but um. Yeah. I mean, based off matchups, we talked about Andrew Thomas. Um, a player that I think is gonna have a really good game this week. Um. I think Bobby Okereke is gonna play very well, um, like he does every week. I think the fact that Watson looks lost out there, Okereke is going to be spying him the whole game, and it's going to be a problem. I think the biggest factor to the Giants getting their run stopping back on track is the interior defensive line winning their matchups against the Browns, which is not easy to do. But at least with Bobby Okereke back there, you know you'll get a steady hit on that second level. Um, and I think Bobby Okereke's play has really developed Mike and McFadden, who McFadden is he's, – he's back healthy. That's another guy, too. Like, he's been around. This is his third year now. Mm. He, he, he's a starter. Nobody talks about him. I know. And he's great. Mm -hmm. He really is. It's like, he, mm -hmm. like he does so well that it's almost like you don't need to talk about him because he's doing his job. He's like a good student, you know, like nobody pays attention to the good student because they know they're going to do their job. That's Micah McFadden. And he's playing next to Okereke, and they play the same position, so that's right. also part of it too. And Isaiah Simmons. Yes. Um, but, yeah, both of those linebackers are going to have a good game. I'm going to throw one curveball in here. Rookie. 
tight end, Theo Johnson out Ooh. of Penn State. I think he has a good game. I like that. Uh, if they can protect Daniel Jones, I expect the Giants to get more vertical down the field on this team to get Theo Johnson the, the ball. And I was a little bummed out that Gabby couldn't join us tonight because I know the whole fan duel connection. I was saying, mm. I was thinking we could do our little Giants Browns parlay. Oh, that would have been great. A little sample parlay, spice up the end of the show a little bit, do a parlay. And I'm debating taking the over on Theo Johnson's yards for Sunday. Ooh. So, and I'll be honest with you, Sam, I'm a big tight tight ends guy. If I was Dan Duggan, Paul Schwartz, or Jordan Renat, I'd be sitting there in the room asking Brian Dable, why aren't you throwing the ball to Daniel Bellinger and Theo Johnson? Why are they not getting the football? I feel like I, I think about this every week. I don't understand why we're not utilizing our tight ends. It's like even like you see 49ers, George Kittle's blocking all the time. George Kittle does not get a ton of receptions, but when he does, he's on the money. It's like, yes, use your tight ends for blocking. Totally fine. But man, throw them in the mix sometimes. Daniel Bellinger's been on the team now for th- two years, three years. His know, third year years. now. He's in his third year. Third year. How many touchdowns does he have as a giant? Three, and they all came his rookie year. Literally. Didn't score a single touchdown last year. Insane. I I 100% agree with you. Get the tight ends more involved. The Browns do it. That's that's how how they get by. And, um, you know, looking at the injury report this week, for them it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Before we get to our game predictions, I just want to point out the DNPs today. Dewan Jones, swing tackle, did not practice. And Joku, likely out. Pierre Strong, nursing a hamstring. Um, Jamari Thrash is battling an illness. Um, wide receiver, Miles Garrett, has a foot injury, did not practice. That's likely maintenance for him. He's definitely going to play. Um, they're just limiting his practice this week. And then mm-hmm. Wills was limited on the line. Conklin played in full. And then one Brown we didn't mention, Sam, Zadarius Smith. Gosh, yeah. So Darius Smith, why was there somebody? Yeah, him, Judy. I, I completely forgot Jerry Judy was on the Browns. But. Yeah, so he actually scored a touchdown last week. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I feel like he didn't really get a fair shake in Denver because of the quarterback play. Um, they went from Russ to – is, who was quarterback last year? I can't even remember. Was it, no, it was Russ again? Denver? Yeah, it was Russ again. It was Russell, yeah. But who was 2021? They definitely, I forget who their quarterback was. That's how bad they were. And then this season, it's Bo, it's Bo, Bo Nix. And now Judy finally is not relied on as the number one wide receiver. And I think that really benefits him. And Although I don't think Deshaun Watson is is great, he athletically wise, he's, he's a better passer than Bo Nix is. He's probably a better passer um, than some of the quarterbacks that Judy's been catching balls from. So yeah, I'm intrigued to see what happens this week with Jerry Judy. That that was a really good point. You know who was their quarterback in 2021? Teddy Bridgewater. That's why you don't remember who it was. <laughs> and Drew Locke was backing him up. That's right. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Before he went to Seattle. Yep. Yep. uh, Damn. That is kind of crazy to think about. A little bit of a weird circle-ish kind of moment for them. Here we are. Folks, time to drop your predictions. If you have any, feel free to comment. Sam, we'll start with you. Who's winning this game and what's your final score? You know, I was really thinking about this as we were talking about it in the show, and I feel like I, I'm feeling a bit confident this week. I really, as long as that, again, that offensive line continues to give Daniel Jones the time he needs, it gives him that confidence to throw the ball, to get it to the league neighbors. I think that the Giants could, could sneak a win. I'm not going to say that it's going to be a big margin. I'm going to say. 
to 16 Giants. It's, it, it, it'll be a little bit a little bit close, but there, there'll be a small cushion there. But I, I'm feeling I'm feeling kind of good. So you only have the Browns scoring one touchdown. Is that correct? I said uh, six, uh, 16. Uh, I said 16. So yeah, well, it'll be a mix of things. Yeah. So, and I I asked that because, like you, I also have the Browns scoring 16 points, but I only have the Giants scoring 14. Um, Fair. I'm literally like Sam. I'm 55 45 on on this game right right now, and I, I think what concerns me the most is that historically the Giants don't play well in Cleveland, right? Fair. And I'm just looking to see what they did to Trevor Lawrence last week. Now, okay, Trevor Lawrence on a bad day is still better than Daniel Jones, in my personal opinion. However, however, his line is atrocious. Daniel Jones's line is much better. So that could be the reason why, you know, the Giants could possibly sneak this one out and the Jaguars couldn't. Um but yeah, we'll have to see what happens. And Troy, to answer the question, I don't know. That's a big problem. It, it, it's a big problem. Washington had 37 minutes of ball control last week. Giants had the ball for under 23 minutes. No, they couldn't win. They couldn't win. That that's why, you know, they gave up only field goals, but Washington was holding the ball and they scored on literally every possession. So, yeah, 16-14 Cleveland, Giants dropped to 0-3. However, however, next week's per- prediction, depending on what happens with Dallas, might be a little surprising for some people back at home. There's, this could be one of those seasons where, oh, they get off to an atrocious start, and then the Giants start winning games they're not supposed to win. So I think that could be how this season goes right now, personally, for me, but I would not be shocked if the Giants pulled this off at all. I think Cleveland is not as good as what people are saying, Mm -hmm. and I actually think the Giants are closer on level to the Browns than, let's say, the Browns are on level to, I don't know, a team like the Steelers, right? I think the Giants could probably sneak this one out. If the Giants played Pittsburgh right now, I would say Pittsburgh definitely wins by one, possibly even two possessions. Cleveland, I can't say the same thing. So that is my prediction. <sighs> I really don't want to go 0-3. I, I really don't. But I don't either. It's pain. I think, that's, I think that's what's projecting through me right now. It's like two and uh, you know, one and two, one and two, one and two. I'm just trying to push it into the universe. And Dable is not a horrible coach. He's just a hothead. That's what it is. He's like, very emotional. And he's strict. You could tell. Like he he's not he's not Joe Judge strict, but he's strict. Uh I really hope they win this week so we don't have to hear idiots like Pat Leonard again saying that um, you know, he should be on the hot seat. So, but Sam, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Everyone in the comments section, you have been great. Sam, any final parting words here for the Giants fans watching? I would, say, I would say we're just keeping our heads as high as possible. You know, it wasn't a bad game last week. We could get through that again. Just got to got to pivot and, uh, you know, let's let's go in with a little bit more excitement into this upcoming week as opposed to last week. Perfectly said. I couldn't agree more. Giants are going to continue to improve week by week. Um, this is not the Carolina Panthers, guys. Let's just let's. Thank they God. Are, they are not that level bad. I'm telling you. They're not you, that bad. <laughs> telling you. But, folks. If you like what you watch tonight here on Big Blue Avenue, there is our social media below scrolling across our ticker. Links are also on the description of this video. YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter are the places to find us right now. 
at Big Blue Avenue. On behalf of Sam Cardona Norberg, I am Tom Scavetta, wishing you all a good evening. Happy Sunday. Hopefully the Giants pull out a big dub heading into week four against Dallas. Without further ado, let's go Big Blue. <laughs>